Welcome to a Legendarium special about Chinese gunpowder, a history in five weapons. In this episode, we will talk about five early Chinese gunpowder weapons used on medieval battlefields before the weapons took the form we know today. And in the comments section, please let me know which of these weapons you would have wanted if you found yourself on a medieval Chinese battlefield. In one of the great ironies of history, Chinese alchemists created gunpowder as an elixir of immortality. Around 850 AD, an unknown man experimented with saltpeter, an ingredient used in failed elixirs. He also used charcoal and sulfur. Instead of extending life, it burst with smoke and flames, burning the alchemist's hand and face before setting his house on fire. During the coming centuries, this composition changed the land landscape of military history. And like any invention, gunpowder went through some strange episodes as men experimented to find its best use. The fire lance, or Huao Zheng, was a spear-like weapon that combined a long Chinese spear with a firework-like charge kept under the end of the spearhead. This design became possible because of a hollow bamboo tube attached to the spear end, which stored other projectiles along with the gunpowder. When the firework started, the charge ejected small projectiles like arrows, buckshot, and poisonous fumes towards the enemy. However, these 10th century weapons only fired a few feet. After the first shot, a soldier used the fire lance as a traditional spear. These soon gave way to pure fire tubes as armies abandoned the spears in favor of cheap, disposable bamboo guns called fire arrows. They fired only one shot but could be mass-produced and fired one after the other. Engineers made them with multiple barrels, leading to nearly endless flavors of death. Known in China as the Huao Zhans, these used gunpowder explosions to propel arrows towards the enemy. This meant soldiers could fire arrows without the years of training needed to pull a bow. One story told of the defenders of Dae Han City strapping together 20 fire lances salvaged from broken catapults during the siege of 1127 AD. Such uses of gunpowder paved the way for the gun, the rocket, and the cannon. From the bowels of this creative mayhem emerged the sky-filling spurting tube. Historians usually call this weapon a flamethrower, but that description does not quite do it justice. Using a low nitrate form of gunpowder, this weapon fired continuous bursts of flame for up to five minutes. However, the addition of arsenious oxide to the mixture made it even more lethal. The toxic smoke caused vomiting and convulsions in enemies caught in the line of fire. For an extra treat, Chinese soldiers packed the barrel with razor-sharp porcelain shards. These caused instant laceration followed by a searing bath of poisonous flame that few survived. It also terrified men who saw it for the first time, with many believing it to be black magic. Chinese forces under the Song Dynasty used explosive landmines against the marauding Mongols. One incident during the year 1277 saw Lu Qianzi craft an enormous bomb successfully detonated when the Mongols besieged a southern Chinese settlement. Because of this success, the famed 14th century Chinese manual Huao Long Jing included sections on building landmines. Weaponsmiths made them from hollow cast iron balls filled with gunpowder. The Huao Longjing has a detailed package that describes the use of landmines set off by enemy movements, mostly installed at frontier gates and passes. Chinese engineers sewed pieces of bamboo into sections nine feet long. They also removed all septa from the bamboo and then bandaged it with fresh cowhide tape. Boiling oil is then poured inside and the fuse starts from the bottom before being compressed to form a za pao, or explosive bomb. Gunpowder fills up eight-tenths of the tube, while lead or iron pellets take up the rest of the space and the open end is sealed with wax. Finally, the device is placed in a trench and the fuse connected to a firing device. Enemies would then be lured into the trench to set off the fuse and be blown to the next world. 
these four previous inventions finally led to rockets that could be ignited with fuses then launched. Handheld Huao Jin rocket launchers began appearing in Chinese hands by the early Ming era in the late 14th century. Chinese military engineers wanted to make denser projectile fields that would slash through large bodies of enemy soldiers. This could only be done by grouping the rockets together from many launchers placed into carts. These designs finally gave way to the fire cart or Huao Che. These Huao Che units saw action during the Jingnan War of 1401. Such units required four men operating a wheeled cart equipped with two types of rocket launchers. The two types had four missiles each. Engineers also developed a firing system that allowed the launchers to fire everything at once or the rockets one at a time. The largest Huao Che fired 320 rockets from six tubes, the grandfather of the modern rocket launcher, including the Katusha system. Though the Chinese tried to keep their gunpowder secret, knowledge of the miraculous and deadly substance was carried along the Silk Road to India, the Middle East, and finally Europe. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.